Oh, no, I'm not. I forgot to turn my phone off. All right. Let's do this. Good afternoon, everybody here. Hey, many of you, people out there. Let's talk about farming. I'm John Dyer, your managing broker. I'm the John Dyer School of Real Estate. I do a lot of teaching. This is a unique thing for me to teach because I have literally nothing to do with marketing or production anymore. I'm all law. But there's one area of marketing where uh, I've coached hundreds of people and the ones that did what I said have all increased their business 50% a year strictly on the listing side. I'm a firm believer that your list to last listings matter. Market's probably going to take a little bit of a minor turn down, but listings are still going to be king. Uh, the things I'm going to talk about, we're not, the subject is geographic farming, basically working a neighborhood, working an area. Most of what I say can be plugged into a sphere of influence, can be plugged into a group farm, can be plugged in anything else. But we're going to talk about, very basically, 40, 52 minutes worth of things to do to gain market dominance in a neighborhood. Uh, I believe anyone who's not geographic farming is missing out. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, you know, and there's parts of town, the whole class built on the, the, the concept, concept of association. When someone thinks of a neighborhood, like I used to farm Paradise Manor over at 51st and Greenway when I lived there. And literally when people, when a house went on the market at Paradise Manor, people were surprised it wasn't mine. When they thought of Paradise Manor, they thought of me because I had 25 to 40% market share at any given time. One of the first things you want to do is pick a good market, uh, you, but you want your name associated with it. Starting at the beginning, uh, all competition in this business, to a certain extent, is king of the mountain. Uh, we have some people in parts of this town that are ridiculously dominant on small and large areas. If I say 85254, what agent come, should come to mind? Huh? Cowboys. Given. You know? Joanne is... You know, she's the queen of that neighborhood. Um, of that zip code. Pardon me? It's bigger, it's bigger than the neighborhood. Yeah, well, and now she actually is probably in, in two. Uh, but literally, that's, and by the way, I would not go into a neighborhood in 85254 unless I lived there and start taking on the Callaways. The first thing you want to do is obviously do your research. Now, when I talk about farming, I'm going to use a lot of farm metaphors because it really works. If you're going to farm, what's the first thing you want? Fertile soil, okay? Uh, fertile soil would be a, an active market. Uh, don't farm a geographic market over $2 million. Why? Not a lot of people can afford that. You get all the business, that still may not be a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and the competition is, is outrageous. Uh, you know, you want to farm a market, first thing you do is you pick an area. Do the research on MLS. If an agent has, and if someone has like 10 to 20% market share in that neighborhood, then go track them back and see if they've maintained. They may just have gotten lucky and it's got four listings because they got one listing and another three came to an open house. But if they, have a, if they work that neighborhood and they have 50 to 20% market share, why play king of the mountain and have to knock them off? When there's a lot of mountains, there's a lot of places where no one actually has any dominance or presence there. The cool thing about that is, you walk into that neighborhood, you put on your crown, you put your flag up and go, I'm the king of the neighborhood, or queen, uh, as it may be. Uh, some days I'm a king, some days I'm a queen, but that's just a personal thing. Um, but yeah, you can declare yourself the king, and then start with it. Figure out how many units you're going to handle. A geographic farming has an expense tied to it. You need to figure out what your budget is per unit per month. Typically, you can do it for two bucks, a, two bucks a unit per month. So if you're farming 100 houses, that's a couple hundred bucks a month. If you're farming 1,000 houses, that's 1,000 bucks a month. But do the math. It's 1,000 houses with an average sales price of $300,000. All you have to do is sell three houses a year, and you've doubled your investment. Uh, obviously, if you're working it hard, then, you, then <coughs> that won't be a problem. Uh, the first and most important thing to do, again, is the research. Find fertile ground. Make sure that no one's working it. Make sure that it's active. There are parts of town, believe it or not, that aren't moving real fast. Uh, 
There are parts of town where you know the average days on the market is measured in minutes, not even hours. Uh, surprise is crazy. My significant other, she puts a house up in surprise and it's an hour drive back. By the time she gets back, she has offers on her email. I don't know why she just doesn't hang out and hang a sold sign at the same time. <laughs> Find an area like that because you want to like increase the likelihood of turning business. Yeah. How do we determine active market? Which market we choose? How do we, what's the formula? It's, well, you want to find you want to find a market that has like out of a hundred homes right now, four should be selling every month. Okay, that's kind of how it works. So if there's a hundred homes and six are selling, that's a hot market. If the average days on the market is 120, that's not necessarily a hot market. There's something wrong with it. And in this, in this, where we're at right now, there are markets that are starting to price themselves out of the market. I wouldn't want to go take on those markets because everyone in there thinks their house is worth too much. I find an active market. Find a market with cross demographics. Uh, you know, you don't want to find, <coughs> you don't want to limit yourself. You want to find a market where you've got young millennials. Why do you want to market with young millennials? They move a lot. They move a lot. They're upwardly mobile. And if you get a good millennial client in this day and time and they're successful and they make a good living, they're going to buy probably eight houses over the next 30 years. If you can become their client for life, I'd rather be a millennial's client for life than a senior citizen's client for life any day of the week. And being a senior citizen, you don't want me as a client for life. That may be tomorrow, that may be, I ain't gonna be around that long, it's not worth it. Um, but also commonality, a, an area that you're comfortable with, like me. There's no way in heck I would go farm Chandler, anywhere in Chandler. You know why? Too far. Here's what I know about Chandler. It's over there. You know, I have, I have no commonality there. My mom lives there. I know that. That's what I mean. It's not my market. So go with something that you know you're comfortable with. The first choice would be where you live. Because what is the beautiful word you can use in all of your marketing if you're marketing your neighborhood? Neighbor. Neighbor. Yeah. Homie, down the street, it's me. It's me, John, from down the street. That's, that's, that's a warm fuzzy, okay? And people tend, will tend to share more with you if you're a neighbor. So start out by picking a good area. Uh, I would want, I would, <coughs> like I said, I would want an area that's got 12% that's got turnover annually. That's what you're looking for. 100 houses you're gonna, would be 12 deals. You get 25% market share in there, you're getting four transactions out of 100 houses. If you pulled that off for a year, what would you do the next year? Add another 100 houses and, and grow it from there. But start with something you can afford and that you have the time for. Um, and avoid competition. It's, it amazes me how much of this town is not geographically farmed. Uh, I live in a, a 40th Street Sweetwater in an area that literally is, is has always been one of the top markets in town. 85032 has been it. I've lived there, for, worked there for 40 years. Uh, my neighborhood is insane. I mean, you put a, put a sign up and it's gone. And people are paying in that neighborhood like, like I like. There, are you kidding me? People are paying that much for these houses. It's moving, um, and it's my neighborhood. What's crazy is, I get the occasional generic piece in the mail. No one is working that neighborhood as 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 a geographic farm, and and it's nuts. Uh, if I was still selling, and I didn't wasn't working six thousand hours a week already. I do a little side business farming that neighborhood. So find one like that, one something that, that you know. And then think about the word association. The word association. You want people to think like 85254 Callaway. You want people to think, you know, Paradise Manor, John Dyer, whatever neighborhood it is, your goal is one of people that pops into their mind when they think real estate in this area where I live is Henry, okay? Is John. That's your goal. One of the ways to do that. And it's, it ain't complicated. Co-brand yourself with the neighborhood. Um, I mean, like, you know, I would be Mr. Paradise Manor. Uh, the king of Paradise Manor, the queen of Moon Valley. Uh, Mary Hughes, God rest her soul, uh, was literally for 25, seems like 100 years, uh, the queen of Moon Valley. That was her tag, that, that's what we called her, and then eventually, Guess what she started calling herself? Queen of Moon Valley, no one could argue. But you can literally walk in and you're it. So your name associated with the neighborhood name. That's, that's where you start. You want your marketing pieces to be neighborhood specific, okay? One of the things you all, you want as many, much of your stuff as you can have is if it's got a sign at the end of the neighborhood, 
you want that in your marketing. If it's got a community center, you want that in your marketing because those are things that people are familiar with. And all you want them to do is think, that sign John's face, that sign my face. You want your face with that name all the time. Much like with you know, co-branding with my home group. You have your own brand, we have a company brand. The two go together. Who do you associate Russell Shaw with? Anyway, with <laughs> I'm not bragging. Yes, I'm doing a Russell Shaw impersonation. Okay. Mind you, I think you'll be happy because Russell Shaw is vertical, not geographic. Russell Shaw, Russell Shaw's farm is homes between 225 and 500,000, and he covers 85254, 85032, and several other zip codes in that area, as Russell Shaw would say. Um, well, it's funny that it'll come just from those zip codes when his commercial goes out to the whole valley. Well, he, 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 has, he used to send out the magazine, strictly the zip codes, but he's valley-wide. Like I said, yeah. he's vertical. Um, he doesn't do a lot of luxury, uh, because luxury people don't hire realtors off the radio. Mm -hmm. um, but he, he, obviously, his, his target is mass media. Mm -hmm. That's his marketing. Mm -hmm. His farm is people that listen to the freaking radio uh, well, and, and, and watch TV. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, and if you can afford that, you got sixty thousand dollars a month to spend on radio ads. I recommend you do it. Wow. You have to sell a hell of a lot of real estate isn't to make back your sixty grand, but it's a great thing to do if you can afford that expensive? it. Expensive? Pardon me? Isn't that expensive? Oh God, yes. Oh, is that right? You hear a radio? You hear a thirty-second radio spot in prime time in the morning on AM talk radio? They're probably paying seven hundred fifty to fifteen hundred dollars for that thirty seconds. It, same prime time uh, on the on FM, middle of the night, 3 a.m., you can get an ad for 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. But nobody's listening. Pardon me? Is that a month? Mm -hmm. Per month. But, yeah, he, I, I think he probably spends about 60000 a month. Oh, but wow. every time you hear his voice, he's paying close to $1,000 for that. Mm -hmm. It ain't cheap. Mm -hmm. But it's high impact. And clearly it's working for Russ because he's been one of the top agents in town for forever. Uh, I don't know why he doesn't retire. I asked him, I said, dude, why don't you retire? He goes, and travel. He doesn't travel. He, he has no interest in going anywhere. He just likes to work and hear himself on the radio. Anyway, enough about Russ. Yeah, but he's not selling. He doesn't do. Well, so his office is selling. He's not selling. Yeah, he's got he's a lot just, of people. He doesn't do anything. I thought it was interesting that we're talking geographical and his is, and you gave the name right. what to say it's vertical. Yeah, he, it, it's, yes. He's, and, and, and he did have, for a long time, he really worked 85254, 85028, 85032, 85050. Uh, uh, but he's yeah he's spread he's spread very thin. So if you're if you picked your neighborhood, and and you've done your homework and you see there's some business to be gotten, um, like I said, a neighborhood with millennials, mm -hmm. a neighborhood near a major job source. Okay, I, if I was in East Valley and Chandler and I was picking a neighborhood, mm -hmm. I would get as close to Intel as I could because that's where all the employees live and Intel does something that's really unpleasant to their employees. They give them big raises, but they make them travel and move across the country to get them. A uh, very mobile market. And by the way, you also want a market that's bad market proof. I talk about my area, 85032. 85032 has been one of the number one mobility markets and held its prices through the last three crashes. Obviously, that's a good part of town. 85254 has done the same. Uh, there's a neighborhood in Chandler that barely felt the bubble and the bust because they're just, they're just everybody wants to be there. Um, so a desirability, close to jobs, close to uh, amenities. Um, and then figure out who your, who your sources are and what you want to work. I'm going to start with the top of the list. If there's an HOA, which I despise the concept of HOAs, but they're everywhere. and Get affiliated, connected with the HOA. If you live in the neighborhood, run for the board. Then everyone will hate you. Don't run for the board. You, you, nobody wants to list their house with a board member because everyone hates their HOA boards. It's kind of, well, they're, they're, I guess they're a little government, so you're supposed to hate them. Um, but the HOA offered to provide services for and on behalf of the HOA. This was one of my silver bullets. I had an HOA. There's an area of town called North Canyon Ranch. For many years, it's 700 homes, and I market the heck out of it. Uh, back then, back then was the day when you made up flyers and went and rubber banded them to a door. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was a king of North Canyon Ranch. I even changed the name of my company to North Canyon Realty. Why? Association. Um, but the HOA, there was like seven HOAs there, 
and all but one of them, uh, I did them. I did them a solid. I provided those neighborhoods with a monthly newsletter with all the HOA information. So the HOA would send me all the information they need to put out when the meeting is. If there's a, a, a you know some kind of fee change or something like that, if there's a big celebration, and they would all get that information, and it would have you know North Canyon Ranch, whatever sub subdivision it was. It was neighborhood specific, and it would show them all the stuff the HOA wanted. And it would say at the bottom, provided to you by compliments of John Dyer. And so they saw my name and my face every month. On the flip side of that, always try to be the person that people learn what's going on numerically, mathematically, and financially in their neighborhood. Uh, most of my career, people really didn't give a damn what their house was worth until when? They to sell it. Time to sell it. And then it became really important. Nowadays, would you say that's no longer true? I would say that's no longer true. People want to know what their house is worth every day. They're tracking it. It's almost a bizarre obsession. So always be the one that provides the latest sales information in the neighborhood. Um, in that newsletter. So you want them to think and always provide opportunity for you to give them more information. Farming tool that I wish I'd had back when I was doing it. And it's gonna sound completely bass backwards. Mm -hmm. Setting up portals for sellers for their neighborhood. So at midnight, the day a house list gets listed or sold, they know about it. And if you listed or sold it, then you follow up with an email. Did you get the thing on the porch? You see that, that I listed this house. Put them to work for you. But people love that. If you're not doing a portal like for a whole part of town, strictly that neighborhood. Everything that happens, happens there. Do you mean a portal like uh, the armless? Like an armless, like you do for buyers. Okay. Yeah. So if, and then have it set up for listings and sales and, 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 and sold. When it pop, they, they get the information. Um, there's a myth out there about just listeds and just solds. If there's a house goes on the market in your farm area, there's a couple of things you have to do if you want to get dominance. One is, every time a house goes on the market, you go preview it within 48 hours. You leave your business card there, and you leave the business card, or whatever marketing piece you have that says, John Dyer, king of the neighborhood. I had actual business cards, specific set of business cards made for my farms. So when I farmed those areas, it looked like the only thing John Dyer Realtor ever gave a damn about was that one neighborhood. It wasn't accurate, but I certainly knew that neighborhood. And they think, well, geez, he must be this guy. He got the neighborhood sign on his card. Make sense? Send just listed, just go preview. Send out just listed, just sold for every project that listed or sold. You don't have to have listed it. You don't have to have sold it. You can't take credit for it. But there's nothing, there's nothing that prevents us from providing information. 444 North 4th Street just went on the market for 444000 Everyone in the neighborhood wants to know that. They get it from you in card form. Why would you want to do that in card form? And you don't have to ask the listing agent for permission. You really don't. No. If you're marketing it, you have to give credit. You would have to say information courtesy of... Call a banker residential if it's a CB listing, Realty Execs if it's a Realty Execs listing. But you're just providing information about a house on the market that they can hop on the internet and find out. Um, you don't have to say that you, you can't say that you listed it, but you're the one they get that information from. <coughs> I had someone call and yell at me. Said, you said I just listed on a house I listed. I go, yeah. I said, was it just listed? They go, yeah, by me. Did I say I listed it? They go, no. I said, well, then there's nothing wrong with it. So you know what that person did? They started sending out just listed to the area they were working because they never knew they could get away with it. I said, okay, I guess it works for you. It'll work for me. And it was an area that I was dominant, and they were just a, I call them passerbys. You know, the one that slides into the neighborhood, sells a house for their cousin, and slides out the other end. Uh, they're not real competition. And you're never going to, you know, you're never going to get those listings. Those are always going to go to the cousin, the uncle, the mom, whatever. But uh, preview the house. Leave a card. Call the listing agent from other companies or other agents here that list in that neighborhood, let them know you have every intention of selling their listing for them. Now you're saying to send uh, uh, like postcards? Yeah, you know what you're saying? just send postcards. 
Okay. Yeah. So we will have to uh, invest in that yeah. with somebody else making those postcards. Okay. It's a piece of cake. Mm -hmm. John, if you wanted to send like a postcard out with like whatever's active in their recent solds, would you need to give credit for all those listings or could that just be it's what just it is? It's just generic information. Okay. If you say, I am marketing these properties, you would have to say I'm marketing this property on behalf of Cobble Banker Realty Exec. But if you're just providing information and address and a price, no. Cool. And they can hit the internet and find that themselves. That, that postcard that you just mentioned might be part of that $2 per household right. per month. So that's within your $2. And, and, and the marketing gurus at our title companies will help you put together some really cool, sexy marketing stuff. And the thing is, there's not just the listed, it's not the, just the just listed. It's the picture of the sign at the end of the neighborhood. It's the picture of the clubhouse. It's the picture of the common area or pool. And it's the picture of your smiling face. Awesome. So they stand. Neighborhood face, neighborhood face, you're developing association. When you first go to a neighborhood, you want to find a way to touch them. Not like me too touch, I'm talking like metaphorically touch them. Um, the word touch has all of a sudden become really bad. Yeah. Uh, um, you want to touch them six times in the first two months. Your first six months, you want to touch them <coughs> twice a month, and then after that, at least once a month. Okay? And the beauty of it, you get, if you get someone's email and they say you want to get put on a portal, you are doing absolutely nothing, and they're seeing your name every stinking day that a, that a house goes on the market. Now, a lot of neighborhoods, it may be a week between they go on the market, a couple weeks between solds. When a property sells, same thing. You send it just sold. You don't have to say who sold it. It's public record. You don't have to say that you, you can't say that I sold this, I listed it. You just announced just sold. They see the word just sold, they see your smiling face. What's the association? That you sold it. And you're not going to find out different until you go on the listing and say, no, I'm just a, that, that's just for informational purposes. But I am the best damn realtor in the neighborhood, so it's a good thing you called me. You know? And, and I, again, I've had agents get upset about that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. So the HOA just sold, or, or your, your HOA newsletter just listed just sold, previewing. That's your, that's your first three. Um, <coughs> and the biggest one of those may be previewing every property goes on the market. And calling the listing agent and say, hey, I know you live in Chandler. You listed up here in my neighborhood. I want you to know I pound this neighborhood. I'm going to do my best to get your listing sold for you. I will tell you what will happen. If that listing doesn't sell, that agent won't give you a referral or co-list it with you. I've had agents on the spot say, you know what? You want to co-list with me? Because I'm way the heck down here. I said, no, I don't want to co-list with you. I'll pay you a 50% referral. How's that sound? Why would I do that? I want a freaking sign up in the neighborhood. You know, if you got to buy, if you got to sell your soul a little for your first few deals, the most powerful impact you're going to have on an area is what? People driving down the street and seeing your sign. There's nothing to keep you from making a multi co branded sign, a specific group of signs. Obviously, my home group has to be there. Your legal name has to be there. There's nothing to say that you can't actually have a sign that says, you know, John Dyer, the king of Paradise Manor. Marketing specific to the neighborhood. People notice that. Uh, if you have, go on a listing appointment and it's your first one, you got to sell your soul a little, got to give a discount to get it, get it. Do whatever it takes because that gives you a jumping point. I now have inventory. I now have a house to sit open. Obviously, if, you have a, if you're farming an area, who, where do you want to what listing of yours do you want to sit the most? That listing. And what do you do every time you sit it open? You provide information to everyone in the neighborhood that you're holding an open house. They're going to see your smiling mug and what's always next to your mug. The co-branding of that neighborhood. You literally want them to think you neighborhood. You neighborhood. And if you're a neighbor, then you can throw the word in, hey, it's me from down the street. I don't like the word neighbor because it's too, it's neighborhood. It's, it's kind of generic. So I, say, I would like to say something like, it's John from down the road. Or it's, you know, it's John from lot 72. John from 3911. Just whatever. It makes them understand that you're literally that close. Making sense so far? Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, anything the HOA does as far as events, show up with some barbecue, show up with some church's fried chicken, what show up with answer? some alcohol. What did you say, I'm sorry? If the, if the HOA, the neighborhood's having an event, an HOA sponsored event, which a lot of areas do, okay. you, you'd be the one that provides the food or the beverages. 
Like I said, everyone loves the guy that brings the beer. Everyone loves the person that brings Kentucky Fried Chicken. I don't know, I'm a southerner. It's kind of a thing. Where you have more than six people gathered, it's either a church or a picnic, and either way you're going to get Kentucky Fried Chicken. Touch me, I was a preacher's kid. Uh, and the HOA will appreciate that. So they'll call you. They'll go, hey, we're thinking about doing this thing. You want in? Because they're going to have to go kiss somebody's behind to get them to spend money and then do that stuff for them. So why not, why not make it you? Have a good relationship with them. Have a copy of the CCNRs, all HOA docs, deed restrictions, everything for that neighborhood on file at any time. So if someone asks you about the neighborhood, do you know anything about the CCNR, et cetera? So you know CCNRs are complicated. What's your email address? I'll send them to you. You know, because if have any of you ever read a full set of CCNRs, <laughs> HOA bylaws? Oh, it, and, and you did it without cutting yourself? I'm impressed. I mean, I've done it, but it, by the end of it, I'm like, where's a walk and beat my head against? It ain't fun. But they're going to think, wow, this is the all-knowing, omnipotent information provider for this neighborhood. If you're going to list a house and someone thinks of you that way, or they're going to list that, put the house on the market, they think of you that way, and they're going to interview three realtors, who's almost damn certain to be on that list? That's your goal. That's your goal. And then as you get listings and sales, then you actually have to start building your statistics. And once you build your statistics, so if there's a, you're yet farming for six months, 12 houses sell, you sell three of them, then you can statistically say market dominant, 25% market share. There's your goal, okay? 20% is, is, is hard. 25% is a very lofty goal. That means you're getting one out of four listed properties. But if you look at some parts of town and some people are market dominant, they have 40, 50% of houses that go on the market. Uh, the trilogy of Estancia, there's this one gal, don't even bother. She lives there, she belongs to the club, okay? That's the next part of it. If there's a country club, if there's some sort of social club attached to that area, get involved. I'm not saying go buy a membership, but those things throw big events and stuff. Ask if you can bring in, set up a booth, bring your banner. Have a banner made for that neighborhood, co-branded, and every time you're in that stinking neighborhood, take that banner. Put it out in front of an open house. They cost 275 to 500 bucks. I bought three of them in the last five years, and that's what they, that's what they costed. Costed it did. And put that banner up. So everywhere they go, there's that, there's that damn John Dyer guy again. Holy Moses, he's, he's everywhere. You want them to think of you like an infestation, you know? Know where they go, where you not there. Okay, maybe infestation is not a good word. It's not really a positive uh, association there. You know what I mean. I mean, yeah. the goal is to make them sick of seeing your name. <laughs> that, may sound, that may sound a little backward, but it's to get, make them sick of seeing your name. Other things that happen in neighborhoods. You have clubs. You have children's sports and if you're farming a neighborhood and there's a school and there's a baseball team attached to that school and kids from that neighborhood are on that baseball team sponsor the baseball team get your name on the uniform buy a banner on the baseball field and the, on the local school go meet the principal say hi I'm, I'm doing this in the neighborhood I want you to know that that here you go I'm, I'm, I may throw up my mouth a little when I say this I'm here because I'm very community involved and obviously I'm a firm believer in the value of education and there's nothing I can do better to support this community than be supportive of you and your school, Mr. Principal, Mrs. Principal. I mean, that's just so corny and hokey and absolutely beautiful. That's just, and then they say, well, listen, we have this event. Say, can I come set up a booth? We're having, they have a little game day. My home group has cornhole games. You can borrow. Be the one and give away prizes. And always make sure that your prizes are better than everyone else's. They give away little hokey things. You know, go spend $100 on stuffed animals and let everybody get a stuffed animal. You can order stuffed animals online, pretty decent ones, for $3 a piece if you buy 100 uh, Things like that are ways to... And what do you do with that stuffed animal? Put a My Home Group t-shirt on it. You have them, yeah, uh, or, or, with your information on the back, or you have, like it's a puppy, a puppy's, you have a dog tags made for the stuffed animals that's oh, your that's little, genius. that's John Dyer, my home group. 
in the neighborhood, stuff like that. Um, when new people move in, that finish school, school event, you guys get the whole point. Be there for the school. When new people move in, you're the welcome wagon. I didn't say the house, but we're really excited to have you in the neighborhood. I want you to know I'm the queen of this neighborhood, and if you ever have any questions about the neighborhood, I'm here to help you. And by the way, here's some muffins, you know, or in my case, booze. I find wine. Wine is the ultimate suck up. Got it? Um, and people say, we well, can't do that. You didn't sell the house. <clears throat> I want you to show me in the law of the code of ethics where it says you can't give free stuff to nice people because they moved into a neighborhood you're working. I mean, it's, it's abnormal. It's anomalous. But guess what? Who makes the most money? Those that do it anomalously. Those that do it differently. Differentiate yourself. Okay? When you hold an open house in this neighborhood, break out the fireworks. Now there's a certain level of obnoxiousness that has been associated with open houses uh, some lately. Uh, I saw someone put, well everybody, everybody knows where Vistancy, I use Vistancy because it's just insane. You know where Vistancy, they have the big divided road, beautiful houses. They had a mile and a half, every, had to be every hundred yards. Big, giant, floppy signs. It must have taken someone four and a half hours to set that up. Now, as for one open house, <laughs> you might not want to do that, but on that house and in that neighborhood, you want to be everywhere. And again, if you're marketing that neighborhood and you're, and you're committed to it, you want to buy a special set of open houses. What's special about these open house signs? They got the picture of the edge of the neighborhood. They got the name of the neighborhood, and they got you declaring yourself the queen or king of the neighborhood, and they have your smiling mug. So that literally by the time someone gets to the open house, they've already seen you as the queen or king of that neighborhood before they ever get to that open house. That will also make them ask you a lot more questions. Why do you want people to ask you more questions at an open house? more questions you answer, more likely they are to trust you, and if they trust you, the more likely they are to buy a house from you. Right? So your open houses are events. And obviously every time you hold an open house, what do you do? You deliver an announcement of some sort to everyone in the neighborhood and you, and you invite them. And make sure your open houses always have cookies or something and say, hey, you only stopped by last time, the cookies are gonna be macadamia nut this month. So they literally start thinking, oh, there's John, there's another damn open house, let's stop by and say hi. You know, people actually will, if they get so used to it, they'll come and see you, they'll bring you stuff, they'll bring you food. You know, I had somebody come and say, hey, you know, it's hotter than hell outside. I saw you putting signs up. I didn't know if you had a water. Someone from the neighborhood brought me water at my open house. Why? Because they just knew me. And they knew what I did and they knew I was there. So, um, you can't ask for more than that. You cannot ask for more than that. Is this all making sense? Mm -hmm. This is ABC. I mean, it's the most remedial. And if you take what I'm saying, other than the, uh, the just listed, just sold, you can apply this to, to a social group you're in. You can apply this to your church. Um, I know someone that's just hell of a good business from the most interesting of groups. It's a touring poker tournament. It's a, it's a, it's, I, I played in a couple of these tournaments. This gal, not only is she one hell of a poker player um, and when, takes everyone's money, but she literally does every bit of business with anyone in that group. And these are some rather, a lot of them are rather wealthy people. Uh, that have no problem dropping a thousand dollars a night on a poker tournament and she owns them. It's way cool I've went I've played in the tournament a couple times I like I would have handed out my business cards and and they would have said yeah, but you're not her I mean, it's, that's awesome. So it, you can apply these principles outside just of geographics um, Make events about you, okay We're coming up on Halloween It ain't rocket science to figure out how you can milk Halloween, you know? Uh, there's a guy in town uh, that was the pumpkin man. Um, and he was a pumpkin man. Guess why? What do you do every Halloween? He left branded pumpkins, little small branded pumpkins he bought for 40 cents a piece with a, his stamps, thing stamped on them, and he left them in the, in the entire neighborhood. So everybody got a little pumpkin from him every year. And then he sponsored a pumpkin carving, a jack-o'-lantern car carving contest with a good prize. 
he literally milked the term mm -hmm. pumpkin. Mm -hmm. um, and and then he gave the prizes. Everyone would come down and see. You know, he brought it. He bring a keg of beer or whatever, and turned Halloween into a party. And who was a, you know the center of attention for that party was a guy that's that's bringing all the stuff. Uh, he had like fancy carving tools. He made a big deal out of it. I don't even know if he's still around anymore. He was like 112 when I started 40 years ago. Um, but it's it's holidays, Thanksgiving. Come on, what do you do for Thanksgiving? You take back. You don't give back. What do I mean by that? I did a food drive every year at Thanksgiving in my neighborhoods. Every year. I had bags made. Branded bags. They're, you buy a thousand, they're not that expensive. And I had branded bags and I would hang them on the doors. If they were there, I'd knock on the door and say, hey, I'm doing a food drive. I'll be coming back the uh, Tuesday before Thanksgiving to pick the bags up. If you just simply leave it on the porch, Obviously had my card in. If you leave it on the porch, we'll pick it up and deliver it to the food bank, and 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 then we'll give you a you know give you a thank you, send you a thank you note, and you can help you can you can give back. You're letting them give back, and you're the facilitator of that. That's there's something really cool about that. They're hungry people, and you're helping feed them. Mm -hmm. You're also showing yourself as community involved, and. People, people are going to like you. Give them the opportunity to say, good, I, I forgot to give stuff to the grocery store this year. I can give, put stuff in Dyer's bag, and I've done my annual donation to the food bank. You can have contests around holidays. Thanksgiving's another one. You know? You're going to have, you're going to have a turkey trot. Cool, one of the coolest things I've seen, someone had a video game made, custom made, that, that they did for their neighborhood. And people, whoever won the game, it was, it was not a video game, it was a trivia game. And it was trivia about the neighborhood. And whoever won the trivia game got a free turkey or a free prime rib, a free bottle of wine, um, you know, stuff like that. Once you get market, you know, once you start getting your market share, then <coughs> start, you're going to spend your real money on social stuff. You know, instead of just having, a, having an open house, get your sellers, or at your house, have a neighborhood party and bring everybody in. Get them to know you. Get to know them. Unless you're a horrible, unfriendly person like me, uh, then don't, you know, I don't want anyone to know me. Once you know me, you don't like me. Hi, huh, Mark. Hey. Hey, I've known I've known Mark a while. All right. Let's see. Um, Christmas. No brainer. Now, <coughs> there's so many things you can theme around Christmas. Obviously, if it's a family neighborhood, you're working in a school. Where's the best place to suck up? through the kids. Do things for their kids. People love when other people do things for their kids. Why? It's one less thing they have to do. You ever tried to amuse kids over the holidays? It's not easy at a house full of them. Um, sooner or later in this process, there's one thing you have to do that's difficult. And I, I would say, because this is, this is new, uh, I would say I would want to get my first listing and have them see me around maybe six six weeks, two months. Then you want to walk around and knock on every door. And you want to ask them, would they like to subscribe to a monthly information something on everything listed and sold in the neighborhood, you know, and things that are going on around. And it's really easy, it's free. All you need is them to give you what? Yeah. Email address. See, back when I did this, everything you delivered you had to literally walk up to the door, spend money on it, fold it, put a rubber band on it, and or hand it to someone. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can get their email addresses, and people will gladly do that, if you promise to make sure that, promise them that they will know everything that's going on in the neighborhood in real time. And at least once a month, you're gonna send them comps, and at any time, they, they can, put, uh, they can <coughs> respond to you, uh, market analysis, and you will immediately send them a market analysis, estimation of value, you don't care if they're going to list or not, you're happy that at any given time. How does it take to do a market analysis on a neighborhood you're farming? It's a saved search. It's a saved freaking search. You just save it as Paradise Manor. So all I have to do is go and open the saved search, update, and poof, I have the market analysis that's been updated since, times, you know, since two years ago. Be a provider of information. Right now, Everybody's, I would be focusing on one thing. What's everybody watching? Are we peaked? 
what's happening with interest rates, what's happening with prices. By the way, we are peaked. There's no logical reason appraiser would give one more dollar for any house in this town for the next year. We're absolutely oh, the top of the market. Oh yeah, we should. We need to go down. If if, oh. if the natural cycle happens, prices are literally going to go down. The appraisers are going to get more conservative. There's just nothing. There's nothing to justify. There's no underlying economics to justify us going up anymore. I have a buyer who looked at a house. He loves the house, and he said, "I'm going to wait two weeks because they'll be more negotiable." If I come in right now, because he feels as though it's uh, forty thousand dollars overpriced. Well, and, and those people are going to those people are going to get an awakening because a they're never going to be able to appraise. People are not going to be stupid enough to pay above appraisal. And here's what's happening because you remember, do people buy? Sales prices or payments? Payments. Finance people buy payments. You know, they they say I got fifteen hundred bucks a month. How much can I buy? They don't got. They don't go. I want a four hundred thousand dollar house. Can I get it for fifteen hundred bucks a month? They buy payments. And interest rates going up right now. Every little bit they go up is going to have a dramatic effect. If you could buy a house for two hundred thousand dollars a year ago today, you can buy a house. Ready for this? For a hundred and ninety two thousand today. They have lost 4% in affordability just in the last year. And, and, and the higher the rates go, the wider that gap grows. You know, it, it's not directly relative. It's, it's, a, it's a sliding scale and it's sliding against them. So people are, we can't afford as much. And sellers are gonna have to calm, realize that it's gonna calm down. Everybody says, well, you know, you're trashing the market. You're trying to ruin it for us. No, I'm actually trying to make it be nice. Right. Because really? I've been here a long time. We've had some of these. They're not bad. They're frustrated. You got to work a little harder. Where you're carrying inventory of 12 listings, you got to jump your inventory up to 14 or 16. You got to make the same amount of money, but it beats the hell out of this. But it's not 05 and 06. It beats. Yeah, but if we went up another 15 percent, the only way for us to be okay would be to crash. It's literally we're that stretched. And so it's good that interest rates are going up, plus it's great for the America and the world economy because the Fed was borrowing money at 3% and loaning it at zero, and obviously, mathematically, they were subsidizing the economy. We don't need that anymore um, it's because uh, Obama did such a great job. It's a joke. Um, One question, Don. What is your opinion, if you want to give someone a seller something of value, a discount with commission? Well, and, and advertising. Oh, if <laughs> if you're in this neighborhood, I'll give you I'll give you point off anyone else in town. Just make and, and like I said, if I was going to get dominant in the neighborhood and it was a hot market, mm -hmm. and I know and you know, everybody would want a listing in there because it was going to sell real fast, uh, I would list it for sixty percent of what I normally charge. I mean, I would take enough just to get me by because um, I want that sign up. I want my foot in that door. Now, once you have 25% market share, I don't got to give you a discount. I'm the king of the neighborhood. So, you know, yeah. What's the best way at the top? By kissing the bottom, you know? Mm -hmm. Kiss a little tail. And there's no better way to kiss people's fannies in this business than give them a discount. And you can also offer the, the back, backside discount, you know? And I call, I call it the miss you discount. Why, what is the miss you discount? Someone a miss you discount. Miss you. I'll miss you. I'm in. I'm the marketing dominant the guy in that neighborhood, and when someone is leaving the neighborhood, I will offer them a miss you discount because I'm going to miss you. I will take fifty percent off my normal listing commission if you buy another house from me. If you buy that house from me, you don't get a discount there. I'm trading two deals for one, and it's my miss you discount because when you leave, we're going to miss you. Now that is cliche and corny. But no one will ever, no one ever forgets it. Why? Because it's cliche and corny, and what sticks in your head? Come on, has anyone heard the Sunny Plumber jingle? It's the most corniest, stupidest thing I've ever heard. Unfortunately, I could sing it for you. It gets in my head so bad. What you know, Martin and Rose, is a way to go. Nine seven seven one eight zero zero. It's like the earworm from hell. Well, we're things like miss you discount. Guy from down the street, you know. Don't be afraid to go drastic. I've seen some cool stuff. And by the way, we got the technology here to make you look divine. Okay? None of us are Jesus. Can we all agree with that? None of us are God? Well, I got news for you. They, can, they got technology here that can make you walk on water. 
literally. If there's a pond in the neighborhood, you know, it's a nice HOA and has, it has a lake and a golf course, absolutely do a tour of the neighborhood walking across the lake. You know, you can send everyone the video. Is that like a graphic of you, you know, a very aerial of the neighborhood, a graphic of you holding the entire neighborhood in your hand from an aerial photo. Now, if I don't want to do that 20 years ago, that would have cost me $20,000 in production and it probably would have looked like crap. Now, someone could put that together for you in 30 minutes and make it look like you truly walk on water, you're truly part of it. They can have you floating over the neighborhood. They can make you Superman. You know what? Tour the neighborhood. Get a get a a, a drone to do an aerial. Put on a, a Superman suit. And by the way, it would not be Superman. What would it be? Your past would be that neighbor, queen of the neighborhood, and your crown look as goofy as you can. And they can actually do a video like this and and lay you on a table in front of a green screen, and you talk around it, and you can give an aerial tour of the neighborhood from the drone's point of view. That's sexy stuff. That was impossible in the past. But by the way, if you lived in a neighborhood and you got one of those, would you not be looking forward to what this crazy freaking realtor is going to come up with next? Yeah. Cal Worthington. Anybody remember Cal Worthington? Go see Cal. The Brock and Roller hat. Corny. Hokey. Cal Worthington died in 1987. And I still remember the Brock and Roller hat because it was corny and goofy. Mm -hmm. So it, it stuff like that. And so you want to differentiate, you want, and then you want the association. Start cheap and expand on it. But if they get interested in, in what you do for the neighborhood, what you're doing, and obviously if something big happens, make sure they hear it from you, you know? School principals change it. They find out who the new principal is from you. Um, HOA is raising the fees. They find out that from you. There's a meeting on an HOA assessment. They find that out from you. Uh, they will love you. Because that's, you'd be surprised how much of that stuff people actually miss. And then they wish they had known about it. And they're like, you know what, the last three meetings, I had no idea about them. Thank God you came along, John, to get me to my HOA meetings because I had real issue with what's going on on Lot 45 down there. Stay away from HOA meetings. Why? Because that's not something you want to be associated with. You ever been to an HOA board meeting? When there was controversy, let's say one guy actually walked in and killed them all. Oh. Yeah, literally blew three people away because he didn't like his HOA. That's wrong. Huh? That's, that's wrong. He went <laughs> I'm not recommending it. No, but HOA board meetings tend to be a little contentious, and you don't want to be associated with that. What you may want to be associated with is I'm sponsoring the happy hour after the HOA meeting. Uh, I'm providing wine and cheese in the hall. So when you're done yelling at each other, come out and have a cocktail together and let's all make nicey-nicey, you know? Uh, do you know who, who the president of every HOA on the planet is? Hmm. A frustrated former military that never made it above staff sergeant, that always wanted to be in charge of everything, and now they are. I've lived in five HOAs. I swear to God, I'm describing every one of the presidents. Broke rot line. All right, any questions? Yeah, I do. Um, with the um, use of the leverage for title reps and stuff, right? For the sexy stuff. Do what? The title, using title um, to help with like farming and stuff like that. Oh, God, yeah. They will provide you. You tell anyone from title. You tell the gal from Lawyer's Title, um, Brooklyn. You say, I want a farming kit for this neighborhood. Yeah. I want historical. I want current. And I want as much owner information as you can provide me. Okay. Go check your emails there in 10 minutes. Okay. Say, I want to do some really sexy farming materials. If I get the photos, can you help me with that? Between them and our marketing people here, like I said, they can make you look like you're walking on water. And people, you know, and, and, and the beauty of that is, if you're co-branding, nobody's probably going to pay any attention to how long you've been there. Just all of a sudden... John Dyer, the picture of the sign at the end of the street. Everywhere. You know? Poof. That's why you want to hit him six times in the first six weeks. Uh, Hops Herder, the number one personal marketing firm for realtors. They're the ones that created the original four color marketing brochures and all that. They're literally, yeah, yeah, Greg Herder is. Um, 
uh, he was speaking in town a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. But they did a they did a, a, a survey, a research with uh, J.D. Power. This is back in the in the '90s, I believe, maybe yeah, 90, early '90s, late '80s, early '90s. And they contacted people and they, they they set it up. They had someone working in the area. And they did a year's research and they had someone contact the area, people in the area once a year for a year. The last two months, they had someone else contacting two once a week for two months. At the end of that, they called people and say, is there someone dominant working, working hard to sell your neighborhood? The, they remembered the eight times in two months, two to one over the once a month for a year. So that upfront saturation really matters. Um, and you know, the beauty of email is if you can get their email address, that's easy, easy to do. Uh, and stuff, if it's you know, junk mail, people don't pay attention to junk mail. There's one thing they always look at. I get a lot of junk mail. Mm -hmm. Very rarely does any of it make it past my recycle bin. Uh, my gal's like, just throw it away. Because it's going to end up on the counter, and then she's just going to throw it away. I haven't looked at a, you know, I haven't looked at an ad in the mail since probably 10 years. But if I get a just listed or just sold or information from a realtor, I look it up. A, I want to know who's working in the neighborhood, and I want to see so, because every now and then you see a price, and I'm like, holy Moses, and turn to someone, what the heck is this? You know, so I'll get them all. And what's really cool is uh, uh, the most common ones I get in my neighborhood are from three different, my home group agents. They're very sporadic. I think they only get them when they do a deal in, the, in A5032, but I'm happy to say that, mm -hmm. that I've seen, it's, you know, when you're a broker, it's really exciting when you get something that's from one of your people. And I can ask, I'll send them an email and say, hey, I just got this in the mail. And I'll, I'll like make some horrible joke about it, like you know, you need to lose weight or just to be a, just just for fun. But they know it's me. Um, but yeah, it's it's the bottom line here is what's what's what is the word you're looking for? Where did I start? And I'm finishing it right on time. Consistency. Association. You want them to associate real estate, that neighborhood, and you. And if the market takes a major turn, this will keep you alive. This will feed you. Okay, this will feed you. And if you want to make two hundred thousand dollars next year, write this simple mathematical formula down. It ain't rocket science. Get and keep an inventory. I'm going to use two hundred fifty thousand dollars. The numbers would float. Get an inventory of ten listings. Average sales price two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Every time one sells, replace it. You'll make two hundred grand next year. I guarantee it. That's how simple this business is. You take the numbers and you back them up. If the market drops in half, then what would that mean? You need 20 listings and you need to sell two every month and, and, you know, and replace them. So you need, would need to replace, but that's it. Pick your inventory, set your goal and stick with it. And by the way, the last thing I'll say about geographic farming, if you had eight listings and six of them are in the same neighborhood, how freaking convenient is that? I mean, it really means I'm going to go tour my inventory on foot. I mean, that is, that is awesome. And I know people, get, they get so market dominant, they start referring out buyers that are not, they're not in that neighborhood. And they refer listing, they only list in that neighborhood. I mean, that's, that's, if you can do that, that's fantastic. Any questions? Did anything I say make sense? I know it's, I said it's very remedial. It's almost, duh. It's me pointing out the obvious. But you know what? There's a lot of money to be made with the ABCs. And this isn't, you know... This isn't slam dunk, this is dribble, pass, shoot, you know, basics. But there's a lot of money to be made in the basics. All right, thanks, you guys. Uh, See you next time. Thank you. You're so right about this.